today I have some book reviews, some history book reviews to share with you. I've got four history books uh, that I need to review for you. So let's get straight into it. And as usual, I will leave links to the books that I mentioned in the description bar below. So the first book that I read, I um, was very kindly sent this by the publisher, which is Pen and Sword. So thank you, Pen and Sword, for sending me this book. And this is a biography of Elizabeth Woodville, Lady Grey, Edward IV, Chief Mistress, and The Pink Queen by John Ashton. Downhill, isn't this a lovely cover? Um, this is, as I said, a full length biography on Elizabeth Woodville's life, but because it's John Hash Downhill, it's done in John Ash Downhill's way. So we don't actually get to the birth of Elizabeth until like chapter four, something like that. We start off talking about her ancestors, and we also start off talking about her name because you might have noticed that it's he spelt it W I D V I W L E. Whereas we kind of know it as W O O D, etc. Um, and he talks about um, contemporary sources um, spelling the name at that time because names were spelled differently. Um, and actually, there's only, I think he said, about two contemporary sources that have the O's, and it was done later on, and we've kind of got used to it now. Um, so that was really interesting. But it's a full length biography about her. And I'm fascinated by Elizabeth because I, of course, um, I'm someone that connects with Anne Boleyn and Elizabeth I. What's happened to my voice? <coughs> Excuse me. So if you're instantly drawn to Anne Boleyn, uh, her and Elizabeth's story kind of mirror each other slightly. They're, they're both similar in the way that they, they rose. Um, so I think if you like Anne Boleyn, you'll want to learn about Elizabeth, and this book is fascinating. Um, at the end, we of course have her death, but then we have the typical John Ashdown Hill style of talking about her DNA and things like that, which I think is wonderful. Um, John Ashdown Hill writes in a really specific way that I kind of wish all historians did it. Um, so what he does is it feels like you're round like this big glass table, don't know why it's glass, just is. And in front of you is loads of contemporary sources from the period. Um, and he's just talking to you like a really like engaging lecturer. And he's talking to you, uh, telling, telling you the story of Elizabeth's life, but then he gets these contemporary sources. He's like, okay, so from this source and this source, we can draw this. This is the conclusion that we can come to. And that's what I really like. He uses all the primary source evidence available. When you flick through this book, you will see that there's lots of pictures, lots of family trees and things like that throughout. Um, because he likes to show you the, the primary source detail. I've now got a little friend that's joined me. Uh, but yeah, I really like the way he, in which he works and how he explains things. I think he's just wonderful. Um, so I really enjoyed this. I gave it four out of five stars, maybe four and a half out of five stars. Um, I still haven't quite decided yet, but I thought it was really good and a really interesting read. And I'm forever trying to push myself to read other eras of history that aren't just the Tudors. But yeah, really enjoyed this one and highly recommend it because... John Ashton Hill works brilliantly and um, the thing is the further you go back in history the less primary source evidence that you have available so you do have to make um, those choices based on the evidence that you have and common sense and John Ashton Hill just does it brilliantly. Okay saying I need to come away from the Tudor period I'm now going into two books <laughs> on the Tudor period. The first of which is Elizabeth Fortune's Bastard by Richard Rex. This is a little biography and I would say it's the perfect introduction to the history of Elizabeth I. So for me I've read a lot on Elizabeth, I love Elizabeth, she's my historical heroine so there wasn't anything in this book that surprised me. However for people that say to me where do I start with learning about Elizabeth and the Tudor period? Um, read this. If you want to learn about Elizabeth first, read this because this is a fantastic introduction. It's clear, it's concise, it's an easy to read, it's not heavy at all. It's nice big font as well um, with pictures throughout. It's just, it's just a good, it's a good egg. It's a good book. Um, I, you know, for me, it's not for me. And for those of you that have read a lot on the Tudor period and Elizabeth I, it won't be for you. But if you want an introduction to Elizabeth, read this because it's perfect for that. And then, sticking with Elizabeth because I love her, um, I got my hands on the um, 
book on the Penguin Monarch series on Elizabeth I. This is Elizabeth I, A Study in Insecurity by Helen Castor. I own a couple of Helen Castor books. Um, this book is just beautiful. Look at it. Look how beautiful this is. So they're, they're all stunning like this. And then if you remove this underneath you have just white and gold so we have elizabeth's signature here which of course is glorious and then on the back we have a little crown and then the date in which she ruled which is 1558 to 1603 she ruled until her death um that sounded very morbid didn't it she ruled until her death um but it's an absolutely beautiful book and i have been looking on etsy and things like that for some beautiful um images of Elizabeth to put on display but I think I'm just going to put this book on display instead because it's just absolutely wonderful. I love this picture of Elizabeth. So this as I said is a little biography of Elizabeth written by Helen Castor who I think writes absolutely amazingly and again it was something that I nothing really surprised me about because as I said I'm heavily read on the subject but you might see I've like tabbed a little bit here because there was part of this book which was so emotionally engaging. I, I've got to read it you. I have to because it was just beautifully, beautifully written. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Again, it's something that I know that's coming, but I don't know. It's the way that she wrote it. I thought I was just, just, it just hit me and it was just, yeah. So, um, What's happened here is the Spanish Armada has been defeated by Elizabeth. Woohoo! Gloriana is raising and everyone is happy and yep. Yeah. Um, and uh, Robert Dudley is ill. Um, and spoilers, he is going to die if you didn't know that. But hey hey, let me read you this bit. Less than a month after that, the Armada, he was dead. Killed by a malarial fever at 56. The man who had been her friend since she was eight years old, as he had once told a French diplomat, who had hoped so long to be her husband, was gone. When the news came, Elizabeth shut herself in her chamber for days until Cecil ordered that the doors be forced to open. A queen, after all, could not stay in seclusion for long, but she kept a note Dudley had sent her shortly before his death. His last letter she wrote on the folded paper, in a silver gilt casket beside her bed, for the rest of her life. Oh, I think that is just beautifully, beautifully written. And yeah, um, go and read this book because it's just, it's just, it's, it's a book that you know has spent a lot of time not just writing it, but then rewording it and rewording it and just working on it over and over again to make it beautiful like that. And then, Finally, I've just realised I've put these in chronological order, but there we go. Um, I've got Royal Renegades, The Children of Charles I and the English Civil Wars by Linda Porter. So you may remember a while ago, I wrote a biography on Henrietta Anne, who is the daughter of Charles I, and I loved it. It's by Melanie Clegg. I'll leave the review for you up here somewhere. Um, I adored it, and it kind of got me back into the Stuart period. I've been out of the Stuart period for a long time because living kind of where we do, you study the civil wars an awful lot, an awful lot. And it was just done far too much for me at school and I just didn't like it. Um, but when I read that biography, I was like, oh, it's fascinating, wanna read more. Um, so I started to pick up books on the Stuart period. This was one of them. And the bits that are about the children and their birth and their childhood and their adolescence and them growing up into adults, fascinating their private lives I loved it the bit about the military and the civil war I didn't care for it so I felt very mixed about this and I would say I recommend this book if you are someone who likes both sides of the coin so if you like the royal side and the military side then you will really like this but if you only like the royal side then I wouldn't recommend this um and that's not to be harsh or anything I just um I just kind of, when it got to those chapters, I kind of speed read it because I just, the interest for me wasn't there. Um, but yeah, I still think it's a good book, just not for me. So there we have it. Those are the four recent non-fiction books that I have read, um, two of which on exactly the same person and three of which all have the same name. <laughs> so sticking with it, um, Elizabeth, great name. Um, anyway, 
that is it for uh, this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please leave all your comments in the comment section down below because I love talking to you. And I shall see you soon for the next video. Bye for now.